Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hassan Rabani. I am an Imam, chaplain, and a relationship counsellor based in Scotland. Uh, I was very privileged to study at Cambridge Muslim College and, and I graduated from the Diploma in Contextual Islamic Studies and Leadership in 2013. The diploma had an important um, impact on my studies and in navigating me towards serving the community. I had just finished my studies from Azhar and uh, the diploma helped me to navigate through my community. I just wanted to share with you a couple of uh, the modules that I felt were very important. Um, I felt that the module on British Islam was very important. It allowed me to understand the context of Islam in Britain from the early Muslims who came here uh, up to now. I also felt Western Islamic, the Western intellectual history module was also incredibly important, allowing, allowing me to understand the different ideologies and philosophies that, uh, that, that came about here in, in the UK. I particularly enjoyed the module on counselling and, and I think the reason was because counselling and mental health are very important in our community. But also from the counselling module, it actually led my journey into relationship counselling and therapy. Um, I particularly remember the, the importance of empathy and showing empathy, active listening, um, whenever you are um, speaking to other people. And after studying the module on counselling in particular, when I was returning back to some of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. One thing I really could pick up is the empathy of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In fact, em the, the, the empathy of the Prophet, the, em the levels of empathy that the Prophet was working at were, were actually very incredible. Uh, I come to understand now as a, as a counsellor, our counselling sessions usually last between 50 minutes to an hour. And the reason is because as humans, as, as counsellors, this is our capacity to actively listen. But when I was flicking through the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ showed empathy throughout his conversations with the Sahaba. And one, two of these ahadith particularly stick out for me. One is of the young man who comes to the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying that, you know, I want to commit adultery. And the Sahaba there are saying, Mahma, you know, stop, what are you saying? And the Prophet almost invites him and allows him and, and speaks to him and opens up a conversation. And in that, the Prophet ﷺ, first this idea of empathy, that he understands that as a young man, the challenges of, of being a young man and what he's actually going through. But number two, the act of listening. The Prophet ﷺ didn't just stop him and say, this is haram, don't you understand what you're doing? But allowed him to kind of articulate why he was feeling like that. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, just very beautifully, he listened to the young man and then he offered him some sort of guidance and, and solution. Um, and that really allowed me to kind of understand how the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his communication actually with the Sahaba. There's another beautiful hadith that we, we hear and many of us know is of when the young lady stops the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, while he is going to the mosque. And the Prophet وسلم, turns to her fully in conversation so the idea, active listening, is that the Prophet is listening, not, not just with his ears, with his kind of facial expressions and with his kind of uh, bodily expressions as well. Uh, so that, 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 was, that was actually incredible. But also that as, as counsellors sometimes, that when we see the, the person in front of us and he's in distress, you know, you, you prompt them, why are you feeling like this? And we see so many beautiful hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, again, when he sees certain Sahaba in distress and he says, you know, what happened? What's wrong with you? One of the Sahabi says, Ya Rasulullah, there's so much debt upon me. I don't know what to do. And then the Prophet sits with him, spends time with him and teaches him this uh, beautiful dua that we often repeat in the morning. Or when the, the Prophet says to one of the Sahaba, why are you so happy? and says, Ya Rasulullah, I actually just got married. So the Prophet was very, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was very attentive in, in the way how people 
um, express themselves. So um, linking that back to while studying uh, the counselling module at uh, Cambridge Muslim College, a lot of it was experiential. So the idea that in class we would be split up into pairs and we would be given exercises of kind of active listening and showing empathy. So this greatly helped me and actually propelled my own journey um, in counselling. Um, and even whilst studying counselling with mainstream organisations, I would often reflect back to our counselling modules and kind of uh, correlate uh, the, the similarities between mainstream counselling and some of the examples that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shown uh, during, uh, through, through the hadith. And I felt after leaving the college, uh, in particular my work in um, interfaith relations, I found that to be extremely fruitful because one of the modules that were on world religions was able to really understand the history and the theologies of these different faiths. So when you're engaging with faith leaders, you know, you're engaging is a very informed kind of engagement and you're able to have very much richer and diverse conversations because you were able to kind of speak um, on the traditions. So I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to have spent that year at Cambridge Muslim College and uh, I felt particular for me, it was, it was very pivotal and in a lot of ways shaped a lot of the, the work that I, that I am doing. So I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives tawfiq and su success to the college, to our teachers and to those people who support it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for learning with us. At Cambridge Muslim College, we are raising the standard of Muslim scholarship through talks like these but also through our certified academic programs. We're training our students to speak to our times and to meet the needs of our communities. But we can't do this without your help. Whether it's zakat, a one-off donation, or a regular contribution, your gift will help us educate more students, elevate new leaders, and illuminate entire communities for generations to come.